Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to be doing some Copic and color pencil coloring. And this video is a little bit longer today, folks, because I've tried to include as much real time as I possibly can. I do end up speeding this up a couple of times, but I wanted to walk you through a few things while I'm coloring in this card. So I'm going to be using the W plus nine hibiscus bouquet stamp set. And I chose the stamp set for a couple reasons. Number one is I love it. I'm a huge fan of W plus nine and I love the style, this style of flower. I also chose this because it is a little bit more complicated and I want to talk to you guys about that. And we'll get to that here more in a moment. Okay, so this is Nina Solar White cardstock. I have this cut down to five inches by five in inches, and I have stamped this in the Ink on 3 Fade Out ink. Now, I know for a lot of folks, no line coloring is kind of scary, and you could definitely color this in or stamp this in a black ink if you'd like but I'm going to talk about that here more in just a moment because I have something that I want to show you in the meantime I am mapping out my shadows with the N5 now here's the thing folks the colors that I'm using today are colors that I'm actually using in a class that I'm taking. It's for Vanilla Arts. It's the Marker Painting Foundation class. I had these colors just sitting here on my desk. So I stamped out these images and I thought, hmm, what colors do I want to color these in? I looked over, there was the markers. Good to go. However, once I start putting this N5 down, my brain is automatically thinking, holy moly, that is really, really dark. I am not going to start over for a couple reasons. Number one, I already know that I have no other color on this page. So I have no other point of reference for the, the darkness in this N5. So it's automatically going to look dark to me. Number two, nobody's going to know that this was too dark if I hadn't have said anything. So it's, it's all on me. It's all on my head it's fine. I'm just going to keep going. There are a couple things that I'm going to do as I finish up this card to compensate how I feel, how dark this color is, but that's okay. It's, I'll talk about that when we get there. Hopefully you're following along with me here. So this is real time and I want you to kind of take a look at how slow I'm going. I want you to see that I am pausing. Sometimes my hand will hover over this image while I decide where I'm going to put this marker down. I want you to see that because I think a lot of folks are really under the impression that you just have to get this card done and get it out the door. And I really don't think that you need to do that all the time. I think that there is a lot uh, of enjoyment lost, a lot of the learning experience lost when you just try to get just try to get through it and get it done. There are a lot of techniques out there, folks, that are really quick and really easy, and I love me a clean and simple card. I love the simplicity of clean and simple, and I definitely have times where I'm just trying to, to get that card made. Whatever creativity is going to come out of it is what comes out of it, and I'm going to call it a day. However... I also can appreciate taking my time and really working on images, working on a card panel and, and getting what I see in my mind's eye out on that paper. Now, it doesn't need to be perfect. It never needs to be perfect. But I definitely appreciate when I can take my time and do that. Now, this card took me a week. It took me a week to get this done. Now, all in all, it, there was two hours of time I put into it, but I definitely had times where I had to just kind of walk away from it for whatever, several reasons, actually. At one point, I thought, mm, this just really isn't turning out the way I want it to. So instead of scrapping it, I would get up and I would walk away from it for a day or so. Another time I, you know, just, I was tired. I just was tired. So instead of forcing myself to finish it, I would just get up and, and walk away. And that's totally fine. Again, there's a lot to learn when you slow down and enjoy the process of coloring. There's a lot to learn about yourself when you slow down and color. 
So now I'm bringing in that in that R29 and I'm going right over the top of that N5 and I'm blending it out just past that. I'm still trying to make sure that I'm leaving myself plenty of white space here. I don't want to eat up all that white space. I still have two more markers that I'm going to bring in here. So I need to make sure that I'm giving myself enough room that I'm going to be able to get those colors in there without making the overall image too dark. I get questions pretty often from folks asking me where to add the shadows. That's kind of a tricky question to answer and, and I'll explain why. Number one is everybody is going to see shadow and highlight a little bit differently. I'm going to see it a little bit different than you're going to see it. Now, when I color in an image, there's some very pretty basic things that I can tell you. Like, uh, you know, if uh, one part of the petal overlaps another part of the petal, where you're going to put the shade underneath the top petal. If something folds over, over you can see the the ripples and the movements at the tips of these petals so I'm going to add shadows there however that doesn't mean that that's where your eye is going to see it and the, another reason why I have a hard time answering that is because I don't want to tell you hey you should put that shadow there because then I'm doing I'm doing the work for you you're not going to learn anything from me if I tell you exactly where to put all of those shadows and highlights, I encourage you, absolutely encourage you to use your own smarticles. You can do this. Stop and take a look at that image and ask yourself, would it make sense if a shadow goes here? Maybe I should put a highlight here. Or maybe my mid-tone, maybe my mid-color should have uh, take center stage here. Take a look at it. That's part of the reason why I work slow because every time I color in an image, especially images like this that have uh, that are a wee bit more complicated, I take my time and I look at that and I think, is this what I want to do? Do I want to have that shadow there? Would it make sense? Really, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, it's not a big deal. I could, I can start it over or I can think of a way to fix that. But I'm using my own brain while I do that. And if I tell you where to put those highlights and those shadows, you're never, ever going to learn anything. And I really want you guys to be able to learn how to do this on your own. That is really the greatest gift in creativity is being able to use your own thinking creative brain. So hopefully that answers that question. Hopefully I haven't made anybody mad. All right, so after I had that R27 in there, or the R29 in there, I went in with the R27 and blended that out a little bit more, and then I finished it off with that R24. I basically just kind of flicked that on there, folks. I did not scrub. I, Although I'm not happy with how dark it is, I don't want to scrub away any of that dark shadow area. I'll work with it later. In the meantime, I'm going to finish coloring in the rest of my images here. So I was talking to you about stamping this in black ink instead of doing no line coloring. Here's a trick when you're doing no line and if things get a little confusing for you. I take the backing sheet off my stamps or from my stamps and I put it in my scanner and I, I print that out. So now I have a reference that I can keep going back to as I color this in. Now I'm still not ready to tackle those hibiscus flowers that are sticking up there but my eye is making some more sense of some of these other images that are in black so I'm going to use that to start coloring in my no line the first thing I can see there are those green leaves that are behind those hibiscus flowers so I just took a just a green copic marker and colored those in on my reference so they stand out to me a little bit more and now I can start coloring them in I'm going to keep this here off to the left I do move it out of the way here in just a moment but I am going to keep it here off to the left so I can keep going back to it 
Now I'm picking a, a section here on those leaves and I'm going to start coloring them in one at a time. This is real time. I'm going to take it slow and just keep going back and forth. So I color in a section, even if it's just a tiny section, I color in a section and then I'll look over at my reference like I'm doing right now. I'll find another area to color. I'll color that in and I'm just going to keep going back and forth until I get it all colored in. So at this point, I'm mapping all of these out with my shadow color. My B34 is going to be help make my darkest shadow color here. So I'm going through all of these leaves here and I'm mapping out the shadows with the B34. And then once I do that, I'm going to switch gears again. Then I'm going to bring in my YG17 and just focus on a single leaf. Then I'm going to bring in that YG13 for that one leaf. And then I'm going to finish it off with my YG21. Honestly, this is probably the easiest way to help alleviate some of the stress when you're coloring in complicated images. And sometimes it can be tricky when you're coloring in black line images as well. That much more when it's no line coloring. It's a really good, good idea. It's a good idea to get in practice of you're just focusing on one image at a time. Now I've been doing this long enough that I can generally kind of keep everything separate in my head. I can go through everything and do a B34 and then everything and do a YG17 and so on and so forth. But if you're nervous or if this is new to you, I strongly suggest just pick one portion of that image, color it in from beginning to end and then move on. And I'll actually show you how I do that here in just a moment. I also want to note that the one thing that if I were to do this again, the one thing that I would definitely go back and do differently, it actually wouldn't be that N5. I'm not a huge fan of it, folks. <laughs> That's actually not the problem I had with this. If I were to do this again, I would actually go color the centers of those hibiscus, the big hibiscus flowers first. I actually end up having problems with that here down the road. And, and then I didn't even record how I fixed it. And I'll talk about that more when the time comes up. But the only major struggle I had was not coloring in the centers of those I kind of painted myself in a corner, so to speak, and I ended up making them super duper thin and I had to get a little creative in order to fix it. It was total bummer. So my, my advice to you is if you're going to color in this hibiscus bouquet stamp set, definitely color the centers of those in first and then work on the rest of the bloom. All right, so now that I have all of those colored in, I'm actually going to work on these palm fronds next. And the reason why I'm going to work on those next and not those flowers is because I, I'm trying to close in as much of that color gap as I possibly can before I tackle those more complicated images. There is a lot of movement going on inside those uh, hibiscus flowers. So I'm going to knock these palm fronds out of here so they're colored in. My eye is no longer drawn to them for the time being. And then I don't have to worry about them later. And I'll only have those hibiscus flowers to, to focus on. So I also wanted to make sure that my palm fronds were cohesive enough with the last leaves that I colored, but I want to wanted to set them apart just a wee bit from the last leaves I colored in. So I'm mapping this out with B34, then I'm bringing in my YG17, and then I'm just going to finish it off with YG13, and I'm going to call it good. I brought in the YG21 on those last ones that adds just enough yellow to it that it sets them apart from the palm fronds, but they still have a good portion of the same uh, same flavor, same undertone, I suppose, as these palm fronds do that they still look great together. You can probably see on that hibiscus flower up there how thin the, the center of that flower is that stamen is just super duper thin. I I just got ahead of myself when I was coloring it in and I was not at all paying attention to the lines for the stamen on this flower. So I'm just going to town coloring the center of this red and the next thing I know both of them I did this twice. So both of them are super duper thin and it doesn't look right. So actually what I ended up doing on those is I took a white uh, colored pencil, a Prismacolor white pencil, and I ran it down one side 
of the stamen. And then I went over the top of that with the uh, Prismacolor Mineral Orange. I used the white underneath it to help brighten that red ink up. You can't take it off, so I had to brighten that up. And then the orange over the top of it to match that. And then I did end up coloring the rest of the stamen in with my colored pencil. Now, it's not going to be a true match, folks, but what is going to happen is it's going to look like it has its own shadow. It does make it look whiter, but it also makes it look like its own shadow. You can take a look at the pictures over my blog and you can see exactly what I did there. Okay, so now I have everything colored in. The only thing that's left to do are these other hibiscus flowers. So on these, I am going to take them one petal at a time. There's, uh, I've, I've knocked a whole bunch of that out of there, so I really only have these flowers to focus on. However, I still need to break it down into manageable portions. I'm still looking at my reference there off to the left, but I still need to manage this. So I'm mapping out my shadows with the N5, bringing in the R29, R the going to R27, and then R24. I do kind of blend out a little bit of that N5 with the R2, primarily because I just wanted to see what it would do. It was more of a experimentation, not because it, it really matters mattered at all. You could totally skip that. It helped a little bit. However, I didn't want to add too much marker. I didn't want to oversaturate my paper here. So I tested it out. It worked all right. Uh, it, that would have been a great fix, but I was just going to move on. I'll fix it later with my pencils. So it's totally going to feel like by doing it this way, it's going to take twice as long. And maybe... Maybe it does take a little bit longer, but honestly, the longer you practice this approach, the faster you get. You kind of start to, to teach yourself that you don't really need to worry about everything else that's going on. You just need to focus on that one simple thing. And once you work it out, your brain's ready to go on to the next thing. You're not confused. You're not frustrated. You don't feel like you're, uh, you know, you don't feel like you're ruining your project. It's a really good approach, folks. And I, I strongly suggest that you, you practice at it. All right, so I just put my finger right there on my photo reference. I pulled it close to me, put my finger down right there, and kind of looked at it for a second. And then I allowed my eyes to shift over to my stamped images, and then I colored those in. That's also a really good trick. I'm not focused on anything else. I just need to make sense of it so I can, so my brain can tell my hands what to do, and then I can color it in and move on. Okay, so I'm going to start coloring in my flowers or all of my images with my colored pencils. And I'm going to start with this larger hibiscus. This is real time. I want you to see how slow I'm going. See how far back my fingers are. I'm going in with a really light hand. Now, I'm using a dark purple on my darker shadow areas. And I know my number one complaint was that that N5 was so dark. Here's the deal. I do want these, uh, my darker shadow areas to be dark. These are a deep, bold red flower. I can absolutely get away with a lot of depth and darkness. That's fine. My problem is, and I realized what my problem was before I started coloring in with my colored pencils, that in five, it's just a flat gray. There's, there's nothing to it. It, all it is, is dark. I, my eye isn't going to read that correctly because it's just flat. There's nothing to it. So by bringing in this dark purple, it adds just a little bit more color to it. It still reads pretty dark. However, it's got a different tint to it. Hopefully that makes sense. So I can still afford to have all of that darkness. However, by adding that color, it changes the way the eye reads that flower just a little bit. Now I'm going to be bringing in my scarlet red pencil. I have the sped up. It is the same thing. I'm doing the same thing that I showed you when I first started coloring this. I'm going in with a really, really light hand and I'm going to slowly build this color up to get it where I want to. You go in too heavy of a hand and you start making mistakes. You're not going to get that pencil out of there. So always go in with a light hand. You can keep building and keep building on it. I am definitely going over the top of where I had that dark purple pencil. Also, there was areas on this that I had shaded when I was using my Copic markers. I shaded in with the R27 
to add just a wee bit of darkness and shadow there without going too dark. So I'm going over those with a scarlet red pencil. And I'm just going to keep going over this until I get my colors where I want them. Now, at no point am I going in with a heavy hand, folks. You, I, I can't say this enough. You can keep going back and adding your colors. You can keep building those up, but you have to do it with a light hand. You don't want that wax built up on this. It definitely gets to the point where you cannot add any more to it. And you certainly can't erase it if you have too much built up onto it. So now that I'm done with my scarlet red, I'm bringing in the crimson red and I am going over the top of everything I had already done. Now, this was only because in my mind's eye, I'm still thinking it's reading super duper dark and it's ridiculous. I was happy with that dark purple pencil on there. It was turning out exactly the way I needed to, but I could not let go of the idea that it was too dark. It's one of those times that you just need to step away from it and let it go. It is just fine. Okay, so now I want to bring out those highlights again. I'm going with a super hand. See how far back my hands and my fingers are on this pencil? That is so I cannot, I cannot put a bunch of pressure on here. I don't need any of these to read super light right away. Now, here's something I just discovered that I did not know about white colored pencils and I never really paid attention to it before. When you use a white colored pencil on your coloring, if you give it a few days, it will actually change. It will start to, to take on some of the color that's underneath it. So those flowers that are over there on the right hand side, I did those like three days before I worked on this one that you're looking at right now. And after three days, there's a pretty substantial difference in my whites. When you go to color those in, you are going to think that it's super stark and super white, but after a couple days, you're going to notice that it's actually not so white. You're probably going to look at your project and go, hmm, I probably should have put more white pencil on that. You're welcome to go back and do that if that's what your eye is telling you. However, I didn't know that before. So it was really fascinating to do this card over a period of time and actually see the difference and how that kind of uh, kind of settled back over time. I do end up coming in a few areas on these flowers and kind of brightening them up just a little bit more. There's some of those edges that I wanted those to read just a little bit on the sharp white side. So I do end up going back in and adding a few of those. I actually, I'm, I'm showing you the difference right here. The one on the right is a couple days old. The one on the left, I literally just did. You can tell a difference. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, something to keep in mind as you're coloring along here, folks. All right, so I'm gonna color in these leaves. I'm not gonna show you the uh, the long skinny leaves. I have no idea what they're called, but I'm not gonna show you the long skinny leaves. I am gonna show you this one palm frond. They're all pretty much the same. The difference is the colors. So on these palm fronds, I'm coming in with indigo blue. This is my darkest shadow every area. I'm going over everything that I had done with that B34. Then I'm going to be bringing in that apple green. That is going to go over the top of everything I had done with the YG17. On this one, I'm going to bring, also be bringing in the spring green. That is going to go over everything that I had used the YG13 on. Now, the difference with the other uh, leaves are instead of using spring green, I think I bring in, I feel like it's chartreuse. I can't remember off the top of my head. I will have it linked down below as well as over on my blog. If you're interested in that color, it is actually a really nice uh, muted yellow green. I thought about with going with something a little bit brighter, but I didn't want them sticking out like sore thumbs. Those hibiscus, they're the star of our show here, folks. So I wanted to make sure that they stayed that way. So the green that I use is actually, it's pretty fab green. Again, I'll have that link down below if you're interested in that. Okay, so a couple things while I finish up these leaves here. I'm just doing the same thing that I had been doing, just going in with a really light hand, taking it slow. There's no pressure to get this card out, finishing out the door right away, folks. The only deadline I am in particular working on here is making sure I get this video up for you today. Outside of that, 
I'm taking my time. I'm totally going to enjoy this process and I'm learning new things. So I'm kind of implementing those things. So they stick in my head. The more practice you have, the better you get, the better you get, the happier you are. So speaking of learning, couple of things. I had mentioned at the beginning of this video that I was taking a class. It is the Marker Painting Foundation class over at Vanilla Arts. It is Amy's big daddy of Copic classes, and I honestly couldn't do it justice enough to explain this course to you. It is a 12-week course. It's really long. It's pretty in-depth, but I'm going to have it linked down below as well as over on my blog. You should definitely go check it out. She has a much better description of it on her site than what I can give you. So do go check that out. Another class that I am taking is the Dragonfly class. This is also by Vanilla Arts. I'll have this listed down below. And it's it talks about glazing. And I haven't had a whole lot of time to really focus on it. But I think you guys should also check that one out as well. It's pretty fascinating. And again, Amy can give you much better descriptions than I can. But those are some things that I've been working on lately. And as I pull out my images to color, it doesn't matter what it is. I always have these things kind of going on in the back of my head. And I kind of try to implement them when and where I can so I can reinforce them and learn them. And really, it is all about the practice and taking your time and investing into that that makes a huge, huge difference. Okay, so again, I'm not going to show you how I colored in those other leaves there. Same, same style, same approach, just different colors. I also did not record coloring in this drop shadow. And really, my only excuse is my daughter brought over my grand puppy and she is so stinking cute. I just love her so much. So after they left, I was, I was still so excited because I got to spend some time with this sweet little baby. And I wasn't even thinking I started working on this card again and I didn't even bother to turn on my camera. So I totally didn't get any of it. However, if you've seen any of my videos below, you know exactly how I do that. And I will have some link down below if you're interested in seeing that. In the meantime, I am finishing this off with the black Sakura jelly roll pen. I'm just kind of adding dots around Around here to kind of help fill in some of those gaps, add a little bit more interest. I also use a clear Sakura jelly roll pen to add a little bit of dimension and shine to those stamen. And then I finish this off with a Nuvo Aqua Shimmer pen and mount this onto a five by five inch card base and call it good. I'm also going to have my Facebook page linked down below. I would really love to see what you guys are working on. It doesn't matter if you're taking any classes or if you, you have a special project you're working on or if there's a specific stamp that is your favorite, anything like that. I would love to see that over on my Facebook page. I'd be happy to engage with you. That is it, folks. We are done. We are good to go. I hope you enjoyed my card today. If you did, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and tap that bell next to the subscribe button so you can receive all future notifications. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.